All right, class, today we're going to be talking about something very serious. We're going to be talking about the N-word. And I'm sure that no one will have any issues with this. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the Season 11 episode of South Park, known as With Apologies to Jesse Jackson. Yeah, this video is for all of you kids that saw the Wheel of Fortune clip on TikTok and commented, Bro, how is this show not cancelled, skull emoji, skull emoji? This is how. Now, I want you to stop and think to yourself. How do you think people today would feel if a white dude said the N-word, hard R and everything, on a popular TV show? You're probably thinking about the absolute outrage that would come from that. Now, what if that same white dude wrote the script for the episode himself and, rather than just saying it once, said it, I, I mean, I don't know, 42 times, uncensored? You'd probably be expecting a reaction somewhere along the lines of a nuclear-level meltdown on Twitter and the subsequent banishment of the people who are responsible from the industry altogether. The last thing you would expect is for the creators to be praised for their satirical genius and their ability to confidently represent a complex issue in an accurate yet comedic way. Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, that's exactly what happened to Trey Parker and Matt Stone when they released With Apologies to Jesse Jackson back in 2007. So my question for the class today, and the question that will be answered by the end of this lecture, is how did they do it? How could they use this word, the word that has ruined the careers and reputations of so many in the past, and not only suffer zero consequences from doing so, but actually be praised for their usage? Yes, Mark. Well, I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious. The episode came out in 2007. That was a completely different time, and people didn't react the same way they do now. I mean, South Park would never be able to get away with something like that now. You know, you bring up a very interesting point, Mark. You are correct that the reaction to the use of that word has seemed to grow larger, and generally speaking, people react much stronger than they did 16 years ago. But keep in mind, it's not like it was okay to say the word back then. Michael Richards got in a ton of trouble just months before this episode for using the word at a comedy show, something that is touched on several times throughout this episode. So times have changed can't be the only explanation. Oh, and to your point about how South Park wouldn't get away with it nowadays, I present you this. Oh, don't tell me people are still mad about that n***er thing. And this. Point 1% black. Morning, Steve. Sup, n***er? So, there has to be something else here. There's gotta be a reason that the show not only got away with using the word, but were praised for it, creating an episode that is widely considered to be one of their best. So, what is the reason? Well, with the intro out of the way, let's get into it. This is that time South Park was praised for using that word 42 times. The episode begins with Randy on Wheel of Fortune. He's just one puzzle away from winning $30,000. The category is people who annoy you, and after Randy gives his letters, there is only one letter missing. Let's be real, I mean, at this point, everyone had the same thought. Randy just happened to have the unfortunate job of solving the puzzle. Well, I know it, but I don't think I should say it. Now, watching this episode for the first time, I started thinking, surely they're not gonna do this. Will they? I mean, I know this is South Park, but they wouldn't go that far. Or would they? Well, before I could even decide what they would do, they gave me the answer. Niggers! Yeah, they set the tone pretty early in this one. On the drive back home, Sharon's absolute disbelief leads Randy to give an explanation of his thought process, which makes totally perfect sense. Well, what was I supposed to do, Sharon? I thought I was gonna make $30,000! Stanley, the only reason Daddy used that word is that he thought he would win money. At school the next day, Cartman thinks it was the funniest thing in the world, because of course he does, and he warns Stan that some people might not be too happy about the situation. Stan attempts to explain away the situation to Token, but Token remarks that Stan just simply doesn't understand. It gets a bit heated, but you know, nothing really ends up coming of it. It's on! Race war! Race war! Race war! Okay, never mind, a race war breaks out all of a sudden, but Token quickly loses interest in the situation and brings the war to a quick end. Whites win! Whites win! Race war is over, everybody! Whites won again! 
Meanwhile, Randy pays a visit to the office of Jesse Jackson in an effort to apologize for his actions. This is a direct reference to the case of Michael Richards, the man who played Kramer on Seinfeld. In 2006, while performing stand-up at the Laugh Factory, he was caught on camera going on a tirade against audience members, screaming the N-word and other racist remarks at them repeatedly. So after the media picked up the story, Richards went on an all-out campaign in an attempt to repair his image. And one of the most prominent parts of this was his apology on Jesse Jackson's radio show. So, during Randy's visit to Reverend Jackson, he apologizes in a way that is rather symbolic. The Michael Richards situation is actually what inspired Matt and Trey to make this episode. According to the DVD commentary, they had the idea for the Wheel of Fortune scene for years, but they didn't know how they would be able to implement it into an episode. Well, when this whole situation went down, they immediately realized their opportunity was here. After Randy apologizes, Stan tells Token that everything is cool now because Randy apologized to Jesse Jackson. Token responds with a line that is both funny and accurate. Jesse Jackson is not the emperor of black people! He told my dad he was. This scene shows some of the frustrations. Frus. Frus. Frustrations? Frustrations. What? Frustrations. Frustations? Frustrations. What the f***? This scene shows some of the frustrations that Matt and Trey felt regarding Michael Richards' apology, as they felt that he was just sucking up to improve his image, acting like Jesse Jackson is a representative of the entire black community, and that everything is okay now that he apologized to him. The Emperor of Black People line was actually inspired by one of their longtime writers from the show, Vernon Chapman, who made a remark about how Jesse Jackson isn't the ambassador of black people after seeing Richards' apology. Fun fact about Vernon Chapman, he is also the voice of Towley. You wanna get high? Back at the school, they introduce a subplot where a man named David Nelson comes to speak at the school about how words can affect people. Nelson is a person with dwarfism, and because Eric Cartman is in the crowd of this assembly, it goes about as well as we expect it to. This subplot is very loosely tied to the main plot with the whole words thing, but it's pretty much completely unrelated. This is because Matt and Trey didn't really know what to do for the B-plot of this episode, so Trey just threw out a random idea. As he so eloquently put it, Let's have Cartman fight a midget. Yeah. And then, That'll be funny. <laughs> like, we're like, we don't know how to get there, but basically, if, as long as we end up with Cartman fighting a midget, it'll be sweet. Yeah, so that'll be a sweet B-story. After Jesse Jackson told Randy that he needs to experience black culture to get a better understanding of their experiences, he decides to watch a black stand-up comedian at the Laugh Factory. The comedian quickly recognizes Randy as the guy from Wheel of Fortune and decides to give him a new nickname. Look, everybody! It's the guy! <laughs> this really gets to Randy, and he leaves the comedy show feeling upset about being referred to in such a derogatory way. As he walks down the street, the verbal abuse only gets worse, with kids walking by and calling him N-word guy, even a couple calling him it under their breath, and when he walks into a convenience store, he's told he's not welcome there due to this label being placed on him. You aren't welcome in this store, n***er guy. Meanwhile, Mr. Nelson decides to try to talk to Cartman about his words, and once again, it goes as well as we expected to. Get it? Shut your f***ing mouth! Speaking of Dr. Nelson, a little fun fact about his character is that the reason his voice sounds like that is because Trey was inhaling helium to do his lines. This explains why the pitch of his voice seems kind of inconsistent throughout the episode. He, he didn't get to me. I, 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 was, I was just joking. In an effort to express his feelings, Randy attends a spoken word contest and performs his own slam poetry, discussing this label that has been placed on him and how it disregards his humanity. He is more than just that word, but it's all people see him as. But no matter how I try, people just say, hey, there's that n guy. Do you get it? Do you see the parallels yet? This is probably my favorite part of the episode. His poem is hilarious, and his delivery just makes it so much funnier. Hey, n***er guy, n***er guy, hi, n***er guy, stop! Now go, when I can be thought of as more than just n***er guy. Respect. So, if you somehow haven't figured it out yet, Randy's treatment is a pretty obvious representation of the experience of black people in America. You know, being called a horrible name, being treated differently and discriminated against, and they go deeper into this as the episode goes on. Stan once again tries to talk to Token, saying that now he understands him because of what Dr. Nelson said at the assembly. Token is still not very receptive. 
So, black people are midgets. God damn it! Speaking of Dr. Nelson, he decides to give Cartman a taste of his own medicine by getting the other students to call him fat. But, once again, it goes exactly as we expect now it to. you know how it feels. <laughs> Randy continues on his mission to rid himself of this label being placed on him by committing to a scholarship foundation for black students. It comes across as slightly disingenuous, especially when he specifically says that that's the purpose. He then goes on to describe his feelings regarding the name being placed on him and how it has affected him emotionally. You really don't know how hard it is to be constantly reminded of something lame that happened in your past. Obviously, this is them still using Randy to represent how black people may feel about the N-word, specifically the point that you wouldn't understand how he feels unless you were in his shoes. This is especially hilarious since he's talking to a room of black people who, of course, understand very well exactly what he's talking about. They're bringing up a painful chapter of my history and all the negativity that went along with it. You can't imagine how that feels. Is this n guy serious? When he leaves, he ends up getting chased by a group of shotgun-wielding rednecks who can't stand Randy's intolerance. Again, it's pretty obvious what they're doing here, flipping the script and having the rednecks be defending another race instead of being racist, and it makes for some absolutely hilarious lines. We want to live in a world without people like you who are intolerant of African Americans! But right when all hope seems lost, Randy is saved by someone in a similar position. Michael Richards? Well, son of a bitch! Not only is Michael Richards here to save the day, but Mark Furman, one of the officers from the OJ trial that said the N-word. They take Randy to their hideout, where they discuss that he's just like them. Randy claims that he's nothing like them since he said it in a different context. Richards discusses how it doesn't matter, once you have that label, that's all you are to those people. You really think all those people out there see a difference? All you are to them is just another damn guy. Again, obvious parallels to when people use the n-word against black people, how dehumanizing it is, and how no matter what a black person may accomplish, it's all they'll ever be to that person. Stan is still trying to convince Token, telling him that he has no reason to be mad. Butters interrupts their argument to inform them that Cartman is fighting Dr. Nelson. We then get a scene of exactly that happening, as Down With The Sickness plays in the background. Cartman somehow wins this fight, and we're all left wondering what exactly the point of any of this was. Randy and the rest of the guys speak in front of the Senate, campaigning to have the word made illegal. He makes some totally valid points that make me laugh. Two words which by themselves can be harmless, but which together form a verbal missile of hate. He even suggests that this slur may one day be used to refer to all white people, and once the Senate realizes that, they immediately understand. They pass the bill, and the word is officially illegal to say in the United States, making it the first word in history to be banned. If a person uses the word it must be at least seven words away from the word guy. I think this is probably the funniest joke they make in the entire episode, because it's just so incredibly accurate. Now that Randy has experienced what it's like to have a word define who he is and how damaging it can be, he petitions for it to be banned, and when he informs the Senate of the potential use of the slur for all white people, the mere prospect of such a thing causes them to ban it. Basically, they're making the point that if a word that had the same impact as the N-word existed for white people, it would have been banned long ago. Which, I mean, yeah, probably. And finally, at the end of the episode, Stan comes to the realization that Token has been looking for this entire time. I've been trying to say that I understand how you feel, but I'll never understand. I'll never really get how it feels for a black person to have somebody use the N-word. Now you get it, Stan. Yeah, I totally don't get it. Thanks, dude. You know, normally when I talk about South Park's controversies, this is the part where I talk about the chaos that followed the episode, but like I said, it was pretty much non-existent following this one. Rather, this episode was met with critical acclaim. To this day, it's one of the highest rated episodes on IMDb, sitting at an 8.8 .8 out of 10. IGN gave the episode a resounding 10 out of 10, going as far as to call it a masterpiece. I didn't actually read the review, but knowing IGN, it probably said something along the lines of, it really makes you feel like you're being called the N-word. <laughs> 
Interestingly enough, CNN actually ran a story about the episode, and it included this bit of unintentional comedic timing that I greatly appreciated. I know it, but I don't think I should say it. But he does say it. It's funny because the segment definitely felt like they began by attempting to capitalize on another South Park controversy, showing everyone how mad people are about this episode by interviewing people in the streets, only for these people they interviewed to be like, no, I didn't find it offensive at all. Actually, I really enjoyed it. It's not really the word that's important. Look at what's going on inside, you know? That's what I got. The most egregious example of this was when they interviewed the two founders of a group known as Abolish the N-Word, a group with ties to the NAACP. Again, it definitely felt like they saw the name of this group and thought, they're definitely gonna be pissed about this, we gotta get an interview from them. Well, if that was their plan, it backfired heavily, considering they would praise the episode, citing it as educational and helpful to their cause. This show, in its own comedic way, is helping to educate people about the power of this word and how it feels to have hate language directed at you. And this response from the founders of Abolish the N-Word is really the key to why they quote, got away with using the word. The episode itself is kind of a statement on why the word shouldn't be used, especially by those who have no understanding of how it feels to hear the word used against them. The heavy focus on Randy's experience having hateful words thrown at him illustrates this point perfectly, as his experiences mirror the discrimination that black victims of the past have faced. This is made especially clear when Stan makes the concession that he doesn't understand, despite spending the entire episode trying to relate to Token to make him feel better. He finally realizes that the only thing he can truly admit about the situation is that he doesn't relate. He's never known what it's like to get called the N-word as a black person. This whole episode is just the perfect execution of the same way South Park has always done their satire, which I've talked about a thousand times on this channel. Take a controversial issue, use imagery or words that, on their own, could be considered offensive, and use them to add to the underlying message behind the episode. So even though they may be using a word that many would consider offensive, they're doing it to better emphasize the underlying point that they're making, which isn't offensive at all. The reason this episode was so uncontroversial is because they did so well. Anyone who watched this episode would be able to tell you what I just told you. They make the point very clear, and because of that, the people who you would think would have been offended understood that Matt and Trey were actually on their side. Well, almost everybody. You see, I forgot to mention that there was technically one group that was offended by this episode, but their reasoning was not really what you would expect. The Parents Television Council is a conservative activist group known for targeting South Park many times throughout the years. Their founder, L. Brent Bozell, would come out shortly after the release of this episode to criticize the lack of outrage surrounding the episode. Particularly, he would criticize the response from the founders of Abolish the N-Word that I talked about earlier. He made comparisons to Don Imus, a radio host who faced backlash for racial remarks made on his show. Now, this is what Don Imus said on his show. Yeah, that's pretty different in context. I don't really think they're all that comparable. So let me just real quick, let me recap what this man's opinion was. This dude, who clearly watched the entire episode and definitely understood the message, decided to tell black people how they should feel about the N-word being used. This guy told these people how they should feel about the N-word. Man, these scripts just write themselves.